Hey everyone, in this video we'll go through question 11 from the 2017 HSC Extension 2 Maths exam. So, part A. Let z equal 1 minus the square root of 3i and w equal 1 plus i. Find the exact value of the argument of z. Okay, so this is a pretty easy question. Let's just first plot where z is. So z is one unit across and root three units down, so somewhere about here is our z. And so this is the angle that we're looking for. So it's in the fourth quadrant, so our argument is going to be minus tan of root three on one, which is minus pi on three. And that's all it is to that. Part 2 says to find the exact value of the argument of z divided by w. Okay, this is also not too difficult. The argument of z divided by w equals the argument of z minus the argument of w. We already worked out argz, that's minus pi on 3 minus the argument of w, w is 1 plus i, so somewhere there, and that's an angle of pi on 4, so minus pi on 4, and so overall the argument is, let's see, that's going to be minus 7 pi on 12, okay, and that's part A done. Part B, an asymptote to the hyperbola x squared on 12 minus y squared on 4 equals 1, makes an angle of alpha with the positive x-axis as shown. Find the value of alpha. Alright, so the way to do this question is to remember the formula that tan of alpha equals the gradient of the line. So this is a straight line, so tan of alpha, where alpha is the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis, equals the gradient of that line. So essentially we need to work out what the gradient of the line of that asymptote is. And that's not too difficult because our hyperbola equation is already in standard form. x squared on a squared minus y squared on b squared equals 1. And we know that the asymptotes of a hyperbola occur at y equal to plus or minus b on ax. So in our case, b is 2, is the square root of 4, and a is the square root of 12, which is 2 root 3. So that's going to be plus or minus 1 on root 3x. Now, our, the, the asymptote that we're referring to, that has a positive gradient, so therefore we're looking at y equals 1 on the square root of 3x. And so therefore, tan of alpha equals 1 on root 3, which means that alpha is equal to 60 degrees or Pi, oh sorry, 30 degrees or pi on 6 radians. Part C. Sketch the region in the argand diagram where the arg of z is in between minus pi on 4 and 0 and the modulus of z minus 1 plus i is less than or equal to 1. Alright, so firstly let's have a look at the second half. The modulus of z minus 1, minus 1 plus i is less than or equal to 1. So we know that this is a circle. To find the center of this circle, Let's write it in standard form, so z minus brackets 1 minus i. So now we know that the center is going to be at 1 minus i, and less than or equal to 1. So that means it has a radius of 1, and we're looking at everything that's within that circle. So to draw that, I'm going to use a pre-drawn circle. So there's our circle there, uh, that should be touching the x-axis and the y-axis. Beautiful. Okay. So my center is 1 minus i. And the region is actually everything inside this circle and including the boundary. But I'm not going to draw that yet because that might not overlap with what's also in the first half. So the part that refers to the argument of z. So let's do that bit now. The argument of z has to be less than 0. So here is the line that has arg of z equal to 0. And the line that has arg of z equal to negative pi on 4 is going to be this one, because this is the line that makes an angle of pi on 4, negative pi on 4, 
with the positive real axis. And so it has to be everything in between those two lines. So my final region that, that corresponds to both of these combined is going to be the following. It's going to be this area here that I'm shading in green. All right. That includes the boundaries, so I should make it very clear that I'm including the boundaries. And so that is the region in the Argan diagram. And that's part C. Part D. Using the substitution t equals tan theta on 2 or, or otherwise, evaluate the integral from 0 to 2 pi on 3 of 1 on 1 plus cos theta d theta. Okay, so we have to use the substitution t equals tan theta on 2. So we need to differentiate that. So that gives us dt on d theta is equal to, the derivative of 10 is sec squared, but by the chain rule I have to multiply by a half because I've got an argument of theta on 2, so I multiply by a half. But we know that sec squared is equal to 1 plus tan squared. So this is a half of 1 plus tan squared theta on 2. But of course, tan squared theta on 2, or tan theta on 2 is just t, so this will be 1 plus t squared. So I have dt on d theta equals a half, 1 plus t squared. And so rearranging I get d theta equals 2 dt on 1 plus t squared. Great, now I can substitute that in. I'll leave the limits just for a moment. So on top I have d theta, which is 2 on 1 plus t squared dt, all over 1 plus cos theta. Now, cos theta, in terms of the t substitutions, is 1 minus t squared on 1 plus t squared. Alright, let's work out our limits now. When theta is equal to 0, t is equal to tan of 0, so tan of 0 is just 0. And when uh, theta is equal to 2 pi on 3, we have t equals tan of 2 pi on 3 divided by 2, which is tan of pi on 3. Tan of pi on 3 is root 3. So the upper limit is root 3. Okay, let's simplify this. If I multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus t squared, on top I'll be left with, t, uh, with just 2. In the denominator, I have 1 plus t squared plus 1 minus t squared dt. Let's move this up a little bit. Okay, we can simplify. In the denominator, we're going to be left with, well, the t squareds are going to cancel, so we're just left with 2. So really, this is simplified quite nicely. It's just the integral of 1 dt. Okay, and we're going from root 3 to zero, so this is just simply root 3 minus 0, which is root 3. And that's the end of that one. Part E. The region bounded by the lines y equals 3 minus x, y equals 2x, and the x-axis is rotated about the x-axis. Use the method of cylindrical shells to find an integral whose value is the volume of the solid of revolution formed. Do not evaluate the integral. Okay, so we're using the method of cylindrical shells. So here is one thin cylindrical shell. And so the way that we do this to find the total volume, we find the volume of one of these shells and then we add them up. Okay, so the volume of one particular shell will be delta B. That's going to be equal to, now this is a cylinder, so it should be equal to 2 pi R H times the thickness, which is going to be delta Y in this case. So this thickness here is a thickness of delta Y. Now what is r? r is this distance here, so hopefully you can see that, r, and our height, h, is going to be this distance here, h. Okay, so what do these things actually equal? So we have 2 pi, the radius is just going to be the y coordinate, so it's just y. The height is going to be the difference in the x coordinates. So let's say that that's x2 minus x1 delta y. 
So let's call this point here, in fact, let's use red, get a different color. Let's call this x2 and call this one here x1. Okay, so it's very simple to see that x2 is then equal to 3 minus y, so I'm just rearranging the equation, and x1 is going to be equal to y on 2. Okay, I don't know where this dot has gone. Okay, so I can substitute those back into my equation. 2 pi y into x2, which is 3 minus y, minus x1, which is y on 2, delta y. I can distribute the 2 through this. Actually, I can distribute the 2y through this and factor out 3. But first, let's, let's simplify what's in this bracket. So this would be 3 minus 3y on 2. So I was just thinking ahead. Now I can do what I said, distribute the 2y through and factor out a 3. And that gives 3 pi into 2y minus y squared, delta y. Okay, so that is the volume of one such particular vol uh, cylindrical shell. So the volume, the total volume then, is going to be approximately equal to, so maybe I should have approximate science, is approximately equal to the sum as y goes from 0 to 2, of 3 pi times 2y minus y squared delta y. But then this becomes an equality when our delta y, I've got to write the limit, when the limit as delta y approaches zero of this thing. So the volume is going to be exactly equal to this, 2y minus y squared delta y. And what's this? This is precisely an integral. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of 3 pi times 2y minus y squared dy. Okay, and that's your final answer. You could pull the 3 pi out the front if you wanted to. Part f. Using the substitution x equals sine squared theta or otherwise, Evaluate the integral from 0 to a half of the square root of x on 1 minus x dx. Okay, so we're given this substitution. So let's differentiate it. dx equals 2 sine theta cos theta d theta. We need to also change our limits. So when x is equal to a half, we have 1 half equal to sine squared theta which means sine theta equals 1 on root 2, which means that theta equals pi on 4. And when x is equal to 0, 0 equals sine squared theta, which is saying that theta is equal to 0. All right, so let's go ahead and substitute these in. So our new integral is the integral from 0 to pi on 4, of the square root of x, which is now sine squared theta, on 1 minus x, which is 1 minus sine squared theta, taking the square root, and dx is now 2 sine theta cos theta d theta. All right, we can do a little bit of cancelling here. Now, 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta. So I have sine squared divided by cos squared and I'm taking the square root of that. So that will just be sine divided by cos. And I'm not going to write it as tan, because when I write it like this, I can see that I'm going to have a nice cancellation between the cos in the numerator and in the denominator. All right, so this is going to be 2 sine squared theta. So it's 2 sine squared theta d theta. So this is one of the integrals that we learn in the 3-unit course, or the extension 1 course. So that's going to be 2, so I take out the 2. But then sine squared is written as a half of 1 minus cos 2 theta d theta. So hopefully if you're an extension 2 student, you're very comfortable with that, that substitution there. 2 times a half is just 1, so we leave it as, as it is. And now let's integrate this. The integral of 1 is theta. 
the, the integral of cos 2 theta is sine 2 theta divided by 2, going from 0 to pi on 4. Substituting in pi on 4 gives pi on 4 minus sine of, this will be sine of pi on 2, which is 1, divided by 2, which is a half, minus, so that's the pi on 4. Now for the 0, that's going to be 0 minus 0, and so our answer is pi on 4, pi on 4, minus a half. There's the final answer, and that's the end of question 11.